In this video, I'm gonna show you how to build a linear horizontal translation animation, a shimmer animation, like the one that you are looking at on the screen right now. So this is great for if you ever have to you know, load items in a list, load uh, even like a detail screen where you're showing an image of something, you can show this nice shimmering animation to show the user that, hey, you know, uh, there is gonna be content here eventually, there's just some stuff loading. And I'm gonna be using Compose Beta 05. I know the current release as of today, which is May uh, 25th, 2021, Beta 07 is currently out, but there's no changes with respect to the animations API compared to, well, at least what we're gonna be working with in this video compared to Beta 05 or Beta 07. The reason I'm using Beta 05 is because this video is gonna be part of the course that I'm building. In that course, I I use beta 05 for the whole, whole course. So I didn't want to, you know, update the version for just this one video and then go back. Um, either way, for the stuff that we're doing in this video, it won't matter. And hopefully, if we're lucky, it won't matter for when Jetpack Compose is actually officially released, which I believe the official release date is the beginning of August. So hopefully when they, you know, release Compose version one, that the animations API have not changed too much uh, as compared to this video. So hopefully you can just, you know, get some good use out of this video and I don't have to remake it. So I think in order to visualize the animation animation and like how you're going to build it. I think let's, uh, we're going to start with like a little demo. So we're going to go into, and don't worry, by the way, if you have no idea, like what code I'm looking at right now, I'm going to give you everything you need in this video to be able to follow along. So even though there's a bunch of code here, don't worry if you're just starting a new project and you want to learn how to build the shimmer, just build it. Don't worry about everything else that's in here. So I'm going to go into our components package. And again, if you're just starting out and you don't know, you're not following along with the course, just build this anywhere. It doesn't have to be in a particular package. I'm going to build a composable called gradient demo. So let's create that and uh, take a look at this. So add composable, composable. And again, if I didn't say what I'm doing, I'm going to show you a little bit of a demo so you can kind of visualize like how you would go about, you know, building this sort of, um, this sort of a shimmer. So I'm, I'm gonna fat, I'm gonna type this out and I'll fast forward the video and we will take a look at this. Okay, so I've defined a list of colors. There's three colors here and they all have different alphas. So like here's a darker gray, here's a lighter gray because the alpha is a lower number. And uh, here is a darker gray again. So it's kind of like a dark, light, dark. Think of it as that. And then I'm defining a linear gradient brush, passing the colors and passing some offset values. Now this isn't gonna make sense to you. I just wanna explain, or I just wanna show it to you right now before we take a look at the demo. And then I'm gonna explain kind of everything. Now I have a surface composable down here where I put just a single sort of spacer in it and I'm passing that brush that was defined up here. So don't worry if you don't have no idea kind of what's going on here. I'm going to explain this with diagrams and everything. So now if you are following along with the course, you're going to want to go into, let's go into recipe list screen and we're going to add this gradient demo. If you are not following along with the course, you can just put this in any composable. It doesn't matter. It's just supposed to be a demo, so literally put that anywhere and just run the app and let's take a look at it. Okay, so here's our gradient. We have like a gray color and then it kind of creates a, a gradient going into that lighter color, which is right dead in the center. Then it gets darker and the rest is dark. Now how this works is, let me just pull up the demo so you can see Android Studio and the demo on the left is I'm creating a, a gradient. So right, like there's a darker color, a lighter color, and then a darker color. So darker, lighter is in the middle and then darker again. And I'm defining an offset, which is kind of like a coordinate, the coordinate of like where the gradient begins and where the gradient ends. And I think this is uh, the mo the easiest way to visualize this is with a diagram. So let's, uh, let's draw the phone screen. So the, suppose this is the phone screen and the phone is a, has a coordinate system and uh, the coordinate system looks like this. The Y coordinates go that way and the X coordinates go this way. And let me draw in the origins for those of you who don't know kind of where this thing begins. That's the zero, zero point right there. So now how does this gradient get drawn on our coordinate system? Well, we have two offsets, right? So we have four total points that are possible. Let me just draw those points and then change back to the black color. This point right here in the top is going to be x1, 0. The y, the y component of that coordinate is 0. And then over here you have x2 and also 0. So the y component is also 0 because it's along the x-axis. So then what about down here? Well, we have the x component is 0 and this is y1. And then again, we have the x component is 0 and this is y2. So that's how this gradient is defined using only two objects the, um, those two offset values, and then the gradient kind of lives in there. So here, you know, you have the two offsets, only four points, and that describes the beginning and the end of where the gradient, you know, starts and finishes. So if I was to draw in this gradient, that would mean 
I would, you know, con connect these lines and we could shade this in and then, you know, that would be the gradient where the lightest portion of the gra gradient would be the middle section here because of the, the way that we've defined the gradient, right? If we look up here, our colors go dark and then light and then dark. That means the middle of the gradient is going to be this light color, this uh, gray color that's got 0.3 alpha. Just to be, you know, really clear, I could even draw in, you know, the offsets as variables. So let's say offset one, that's going to equal x1, y1, and then offset two. So offset, offset two equals x2 and y2. So that's how we're able to describe this gradient using only four points, x1, y1, x2, y2. So if we think about that and we think about the diagram, really to get this thing shimmering the way that we want is we just need we just need this gradient to translate from the point zero zero until you know off the screen and then repeat indefinitely. And that would give us you know our desired outcome. If we take a look at the emulator again, if I just do a, a, uh, a search, you can see that shimmer just translates from zero zero all the way down to the bottom corner and then repeats over and over again. So let's uh, let's give it a shot. Let's go into our components package here in recipe list. And again, if you're just following along on YouTube, then just put this wherever you want. The package structure is not important. Create a file and call this shimmer recipe card item because that's what we're that's really what we're trying to do here is we're trying to build like uh, a recipe sort of list item for our list. So annotate with add composable, do function shimmer recipe card item. The arguments here will be the colors. And a lot of this isn't going to make sense to you right now, but just kind of keep following along and I'll explain it kind of as we go. So colors, which is a list of colors. Now the second argument is going to be the X shimmer. And this is, you know, the X coordinate of the animation. Then we have the Y shimmer and that will also be a float. Whoops, that should be, that should be a Y shimmer, not an X shimmer. Uh, next one's going to be the card height, since you might want to have different values depending on your use case in your UI, to, you know, how high do you want this image to be or this card to be. Uh, then we have the gradient width, which is something that I will explain shortly as we go through this. And then last but not least is the padding. Now let's open this up and what is this thing going to look like? First, I'll create the brush. So just like we did over here in the gradient demo, we have this brush that's defined by this linear gradient. So let me actually just copy that and I will paste that into here. But the offsets aren't static because we want them to be moving. So here we want to, you know, translate our X value, translate our Y value for both of these offsets. So what do we want to do here? Well, we're going to do X shimmer. And for now, I'm going to leave that. We're, we're not going to make use of the gradient width. We're going to come back and use that later. And I'm going to do uh, Y shimmer for the other argument here. And again, this one will be X shimmer and this one will be Y shimmer. So right away, when you look at this, you're, you're probably thinking, well, Mitch, that's going to be just like a straight line. So if you were to, uh, you know, go back to the diagram here, really what that would draw is it would just it would there be no difference from, you know, this point here to this point here. It would basically just draw a line across the screen. And that's what the brush would look like. So obviously that's not going to work. So what we can do is we can make use of this gradient width variable that we're going to pass as an argument here. So do negative or minus gradient width and do minus gradient width. So the gradient width, as you're probably guessing, is going to be it's going to be defined by the distance between these two points. So like the distance between Y1 and Y2 and the distance between X1 and X2. And that's going to give us our, our overall gradient width. And that's why the variable is named gradient width. Now we need to build a composable that's going to use this brush to, you know, build the composable on the screen. So use a column column composable. Whoops, I don't know how it just suddenly jumped to the top there. Now we want to add a modifier to our column composable. Do modifier equals modifier dot padding and pass that padding. That's an argument to this uh, composable. Get those imports. And now inside of the column, we want to add a spacer or actually, sorry, add a surface and then a spacer. So just like we did in the gradient demo. So copy this surface and the spacer, paste it in. And we want to do kind of almost the same thing here, except we want to pass a, we want to do fill maximum width and then pass a specific height. So do height and then pass that card height parameter. That's going to define the, the size of this thing that we're trying to shimmer. 
And then for the background, obviously just set the brush because that's how, that's that's the animation. That's the thing that we're animating here. Now for us, we're making this look a little better by adding this secondary bar down here, which is supposed to make it look like, you know, a title bar. And if you take a look at what these recipes look like, there's an image and then there's kind of some text down below the image. So that's what that sort of secondary bar is gonna be down there. And you can add any number of these. I'm just gonna add one because that's what, you know, that's what kind of fits our use case in our application. So come down below this surface that you just added, add a spacer to give a little bit of space, do modifier equals modifier dot height and do eight BP, get that import. So that's gonna add, that's just gonna add a little bit of space. Let me pull up the app again. A little bit, of, this little bit of space right here between the two uh, gray spots. So adding that little bit of space and then below that we wanna add another surface with a spacer. And this is our, you know, our title, sort of section. So this one needs to be significantly smaller than the card. So what we're gonna do is do card height divided by 10. So the size of that uh, shimmer, the sort of bot one that sits on the bottom here is gonna be one tenth of the size of this top one. Also, let's actually change the height of the spacer to 16 DP just to kind of space it out a little bit more. Other than that, it's exactly the same. You know, we pa pass the same brush and we're kind of ready to go. So the last sort of step in this procedure is how do we actually animate these values? You know, our composable is pretty much done. Our shimmer is ready to go. We just need a way to actively change X shimmer and Y shimmer uh, so that it looks like this thing, this gradient is translating across the screen. So for that, I'm gonna build another composable. So going to components here, right click, go to new Kotlin file and call this one loading recipe list shimmer. And this will contain all of the kind of animation stuff that we need. So it'll be a file and let's, uh, let's build this thing. So add composable function loading recipe list shimmer. Now the arguments for this will be the image height and that'll just be in DP, get that import. And the second argument here is gonna be padding. So that will also be in DP. And by default, let's just say, you know, 16 DP. Now open this thing up and I'll give you guys more room so you can get a better view. Tab this in and we're ready to go. Now the most difficult part about this is probably figuring out, you know, how far, you know, where does the shimmer, well, we know where the shimmer starts. It's in the point zero zero, but how far does the shimmer go? Like what is this point down in the bottom corner? Because every phone has a coordinate system. The phones could have different sizes. We need a way to actively determine what is this position right here on the phone screen. So for that, we can use a box with constraints. So box with constraints, open this up and we can add a, also add a modifier to this. So add a modifier parameter, do modifier.fill maximum size. Whoops, looks like it grabbed modifier twice. So inside a box with constraints, we get access to a whole bunch of uh, properties about the screen. Like we can get the width of it, the height of it, all that stuff. So that's really, that's what we need. So let's get the card, width in pixels and set that equal to, um, we have to do a unit conversion. So we have to say uh, width local density uh, dot current, close that off. And then we can do a unit conversion in here. So we want to do maximum width minus the padding, any padding that we have times two, because the, the, the padding is gonna be on both sides. It's gonna be on the right side and the left side. So we have to multiply that by two. Uh, and then do dot two pixels, so two pixels. And then do the same thing for the height. So card height pixels, we wanna get the maximum height and do the exact same, or actually we only need uh, we only need padding for one of the sides. And this is, there's a mistake here. This needs to be the image height minus the padding and brackets do not need to be around there. So there we go, we have our card width pixels and our card height pixels for the, you know, the, the coordinates that we need to animate from and to. Now let's create that gradient width variable. So do gradient uh, width, set that equal to, this is gonna be a float, set it equal to 0.2F times the card height pixels. So what this is doing is I'm saying, okay, whatever the card height is, the width of the gradient, I want it to be 20% of that. So if we bring up our app, whatever the, the width of this entire sort of card is, I want the this gradient to be roughly 25% or one fifth of the size of that. Just, I just think that that looks good. Now we're gonna build the animation. So we wanna animate, if we look over here, we wanna animate this X shimmer value and this Y shimmer value. Now at first you might be thinking that you can do a single animation for both of them, but that's not true because the, um, the, the width might not necessarily equal the height. Like we have this, 
image occupying the entire width, but we have a predefined height. So these could be equal, like that's possible, but it's not likely. So we have to do an animation for both the width and the height. So for Compose Beta 05, one way you can build these animations is using this infinite uh, transition kind of builder. So did I spell that right? Infinite, infinite it transition set that equal to remember infinite transition now i want to do the x card shimmer so do x card shimmer set that equal to infinite transition dot animate float now we get a bunch of arguments here that we need to pass we're going to start at the zero value our target value is like our our finished value for that we need to do our card width pixels plus the gradient width um, notice I'm adding the gradient width here. So the reason for that is I want the shimmer to finish off of the screen. So it should finish once the gradient leaves the screen. Otherwise, that shimmer will still be on the screen when the animation finishes and it just won't look as good. I want it to go from off the screen to off the screen. That's why I'm adding the gradient width to the end of this. Now for the animation spec, we can do infinite, uh, infinite repeatable. So infinite repeatable. And now this has some arguments that we can pass. One of them is the animation. The type of animation we're gonna use is a tween. There's a bunch of different types of animations you can use. Uh, so let me look into infinite repeatable and go into the uh, duration spa uh, animation spec. There's a spring, there's a tween, which is the simplest one. Um, let me scroll down, let me just look for a tween. There's the tween one, let me scroll down. There's the spring, there's keyframes. These are just different ways to define your animation, basically like uh, the animation curve, like you know how, how quickly does it go to midway through and then how quickly does it go to the finished point, that kind of thing. Tween is the simplest one. You can pass some simple parameters, you know, how long, how long it's gonna last, uh, how, long, uh, how long of a delay until the next one. It, this is basically just the simplest version. Think of it as, a simple animation. So a tween takes a duration in milliseconds, like I said. I think 1300 looks good. That's why we're going to use that. Easing is the, you know, the curve of how this uh, animation is going to go from start to end. There's a bunch of different types of easing. Linear is basically just, you know, it's uh, it's straight. There's not an acceleration. There's not a deceleration. It's just a constant rate. Whereas you, you might have fast out linear easing or fast out linear in easing, linear out slow in easing. These are just different uh, ways to uh, either accelerate or decelerate the animation throughout the lifetime of that particular run of the animation. Uh, now we're also gonna pass a delay, so 300 milliseconds. So the time between the, the start of the, the second one to the end of the first one and so on and so on. And then finally a repeat mode, and we're gonna do repeat mode dot uh, restart. So this just goes indefinitely forever. So that's our X, X uh, card shimmer. Now let's copy this and we're gonna do one for the Y value. So just paste that down below, rename this to Y card shimmer. Now this will only differ with respect to the target value. So do card height and pixels plus the gradient width, everything else is exactly the same. Now let's scroll down and let's define the colors. So do value colors equals, now this can be taken right from the gradient demo at the beginning of the video. We have our you know darker gray, lighter gray, then darker gray again, that, that's what uh, defines the, the uh, gradient that we are using to make this look like a nice shimmer. And then down below that, we want to actually use this thing. So just do lazy column. And inside of the lazy column, I'm gonna use five of them. You don't have to use five, but we're, we are dealing with a list. Like if you look at the finished version or the, the demo app here, if I scroll, I wanna be able to, I wanna be able to scroll a little bit. So that's why I'm gonna show five of them kind of in a list. You could show more, you could show less. It's really up to you. So I'm gonna do uh, item, this should be items five, items and do five, open this up. And then inside of this, we're gonna do shimmer recipe card item, and then just pass all of our parameters. So colors, we have X card shimmer, we have Y card shimmer. Oh, we need to call a dot value on that and dot value on that one. And the card height, we can just do image height and gradient width will be gradient width. And then finally the padding. So now let's, uh, let's use this thing in our application. For you, if anyone is just following along right now and you're not watching the course, like you're watching this on YouTube, you could just put this in anywhere, put a value for the image height, maybe 260 uh, DP and you'd be good to go and then you can just see what that looks like. For me, um, for everybody else who's watching the course on my website right now, 
we're gonna go into recipe list and that's where we're gonna add this thing. So go into recipe list, scroll up a little bit and right here where it says loading and the recipes, the list of recipes are empty, do loading recipe list shimmer and pass an image height. Uh, I think we defined, we defined a constant for that somewhere. Recipe image height, yeah. But this is about, I think it's dot dp. This is about 260. So 260 dp is what we're gonna use here. So for those of you who are watching on YouTube, just use 260. You can use whatever you want, like I said, but 260 I think looks good. Now as a last step, for those of you who are watching the course on my website, go to the shared directory, the Kotlin shared directory here, go into common main, Go into the interactors, go into recipe list, go into search recipes. Here we're gonna increase this delay to 5,000 so that when we actually do a search for recipes that we do get a chance to see the shimmer. Otherwise the network is just too fast and we won't get a chance to really look at it. So let's run this and let's go take a look and see if our shimmer is working. Oh, whoops, uh, I forgot that earlier we put in this gradient demo. So make sure to get rid of the gradient demo, comment back in the recipe list and uh, now run it and now let's take a look. All right, there's the app launching and boom, there we go. There's our beautiful shimmer animation. It looks great. We have that color coming across the screen. Uh, let me run it again so you can get another look. Really, really nice. I love the way this shimmer looks and we can scroll it a little bit too. And then boom, once it's done, we get our, you know, our recipes coming into view. All right, if you're watching on YouTube, that's gonna be it. That's how you build a you know, relatively straightforward animation using Jetpack Compose, using a gradient to translate kind of horizontally from the origin zero, zero down to a defined point and uh, build a nice little shimmer animation that you can use in any of your lists and make your users actually think that something is loading and they're not just waiting there and nothing's happening. If you're watching this course on my website, in the next video, we are gonna work on event-driven UIs. So essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you why people are saying MVI is the best architecture for Jetpack Compose or I guess declarative UIs in general. If you are not watching this course on my website, you should go to my website, go register, go watch the course. I'm gonna show you how to build, you know, quote unquote, cross-platform apps using Kotlin, Kotlin multi-platform mobile. It's not a free course, it's a paid course, but I guarantee you it will be the best money you ever spend learning Android development. So go to my website, codingwithmitch.com, register, buy the course, and watch it. What are you waiting for?